Hello and welcome to Tina Renee's Dollhouse. I'm your host, Tina Renee. Today we have a very serious subject, very serious subject matter on the floor. We're going to be talking about and discussing bullying in the workplace. Help me welcome Job Stewart of CSUEU, Miss Anel Martin. Thank hey. you, Miss Martin, for joining us today. Thank you, Tina, for having me. Absolutely. Now, we're going to get right into it. Miss Martin is a job steward. I want you to tell us what your organization does, your role in the organization, and we're going to just get down to the the root of this bullying in the workplace. Miss Nell Martin is going to help us with that. Okay. Um, actually, I'm a job steward for the California State University Employees Union, where I currently serve at the San Bernardino campus in San Bernardino, California. And the organization is incorporated uh, where we represent uh, administrative and clerical units, uh, custodians, uh, we represent professional and technical units, and also the healthcare support for the staff of the California State University Employees Union. It's somewhere around about 13,000 employees statewide. Okay. Okay, and so your role, your primary role? My primary role currently is to serve as a campus job steward. I am the chief steward on my campus. I'm responsible for supervising all the other job stewards in the area of grievances and workplace uh, complaints okay. and um, any type of grievances that they have against uh, another manager uh, in the workplace. Okay, so like when an employee comes to you or necessary to the uh, department with a complaint saying, I've been bullied, I've been harassed, I don't feel that I'm being treated fairly, what is it? what steps do you take in your department to? Okay, the steps that we generally take, we have the employee fill out an intake form, which is a questionnaire that answers all of the questions. And it's called the five W's, what, when, where, why, and how, or who. What, when, why, how, or who. Or who. Oh, okay. Yes. When these incidents occurred, it's very important to document all of the incidences as they happen. Whether, most of the time, it's a violation of our contract or our collective bargaining agreement that we have with the University of Cal the California State University. Um, but in any other case, when it's personal or it has to do with discrimination or harassment or workplace bullying, then there is an article within our contract that helps cover those terms. And so we help the employee put together sort of a, a case file, you know, to file a complaint against um, usually the manager that's happening. If it is an employee on employee complaint, then it goes to human resources. But we will assist the employee in that instance as well. Okay. So what, I guess, what are the symptoms? How would one know if they're being uh, bullied? I mean, you can't obviously say, well, I want to file a complaint because I said good morning to my manager and they didn't say good morning back. I feel discriminated. I'm sure it's not that frivolous. What are some symptoms that one might look for um, if, if they are a victim? Okay. So generally, most victims aren't usually aware that this is taking place. However, um, if they begin to suspect that, the, that these different things are taking place, some of the signs can be uh, sabotaging your work, another employee sabotaging your work, being yelled at or screamed at by a manager, or being put down uh, at meetings in mm -hmm. public, you know, in the forum if you're bringing up, you know, good ideas or suggestions and you may be put down um, in front of others, and then um, being denied like a raise or promotion and you know you deserve it, and then other are getting passed over for raises. Um, co-workers that refuse to help you when you ask them. Yes. And so, um, and being given the silent treatment, and that's a big one a lot of times, you know, people walk around and they just give each other the silent treatment, and there's no reason or rhyme for it. Right. Okay. So, so if someone is experiencing any of these type of sy symptoms, uh, you might be a, a victim of bullying in the workplace, but there's also something called mobbing in the workplace. And I want Ms. Martin to go into decode because it's, it's kind of different. And uh, go ahead. What is mobbing in the workplace? Okay, so mobbing in the workplace, well, just 
Um, the difference between the two, first of all, bullying can be one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. It could be an employee against an employee, or it could be an employee who bullies a manager, or it could be a manager who bullies an employee. But when it comes to mobbing, mobbing is more or less a group bullying. That's where you have a group ringleader, sort of a click at work, and someone in the group is the ringleader, and they give orders to the other individuals in the group to sabotage, harass, or mistreat the the one specific individual. Like they focus on mistreating that individual on a daily basis. So it's very important to start documenting the incidences as they happen by date, by time, who did what and what they did and where they did it and how they did it. So okay. those are the things that will help uh, solidify your case, you know, so that you can try to get some help. Okay. And so when this goes on, and you get the case and all the documentation is provided, what happens to that individual or that group of, uh, well, let me, let me ask this first. Is the individual complaining protected? Is this like an anonymous thing? Obviously, there's some sort of investigation that takes place. How is the victim protected in all of this? Okay, well, generally, um, this happens on a confidential level. Okay. It's supposed to be kept confidential. However, in the investigation process, things will be revealed yes. and so you have to agree to that when you go to human resources and you want to get the help you have to but they're supposed to protect you against any further bullying or any other incidents and so most places where, where I work at California State University San Bernardino human resources will intervene on the behavior to try to help stop the person that's you know promoting the bad behavior they will do different things like you know, they will be disciplined or they may be reprimanded. They may be uh, actually put on administrative leave from yeah. their job while the investigation is going on so that, you know, some of the tempers can, you know, go down because people's tempers tend, tend to flare in situations like that. And so most of the time that is what takes place. And um, they, they will go as far as they can to try to protect the employee within the workplace environment because, you know, they have to. Okay. Is it is it safe to say um, the individual that's a victim, they should not be afraid to report out of fear of um, what the, I guess, um, the people that are victimizing them, they, they shouldn't be afraid to report. A lot of times these things go on and people say, well, I'm not going to report it because I'm, I'm afraid that I might lose my job or I'm afraid that these people will come after me in some sort of way or another. Would, is it safe to say that it's okay to report? You should not be afraid or hold back from reporting these sorts of things. Definitely. Oh, definitely. You should more than, I mean, you need to bring it to the forefront immediately. immediately. If you know that there's a, notice that there's a pattern most people can go directly to their managers, but honestly, there's usually a employee assistance program on several jobs. So where if you can go to HR, Human Resources, they will point you in that direction so that at least someone is paying attention to what you're doing or a trusted friend, someone that you can speak to. And another thing that I want to say is that a lot of times workplace bullying or group bullying or the mobbing occurs when other people are actually aware of what's going on and mm -hmm. they witness it. And so if you are witnessing these things, it's okay to do third party reporting. It's called third party reporting okay. where you call and report the incident against the, you know, the, the uh, bully or the person that's, you know, promoting it the negative behavior in the job. Okay. And I know you have some information here today. There's actually, there's an actual institute for this. Mm -hmm. Give us some information on that. What, what exactly the institute? Uh, yes, there. if you look on the uh, website, there are National Institute, um, Na National Institutes on Health Against Bullying. Um, it's called the National Institute of, the National Institute of Safe Occupational Safety and Health. You can mm -hmm. find that online. Also, if you Google it, you can Google under the title of Workplace Bullying so that you can discover what the other websites are that have um, information that can uh, give you uh, other tidbits on how to avoid the workplace bullying, how to recognize mm -hmm. it. You know, there'll be a checklist of things that you can look for. And actually, we, we as a union sent out some information to other um, to other um, employees that came out of Sacramento from the Sacramento campus that had like a checklist of things that you can look for and we actually posted those things in the, in the workplace and um, in our work environment. 
Um, the biggest thing I want to say is that recognizing what's going on is the biggest, you know, admitting to yourself yeah. that something really abnormal is taking place and being able to recognize it and at least talk about it. And sometimes people may seem a little bit put off by you bringing up the subject, but mm -hmm. don't give up on that. Make sure that you do what is right and what um, prevents you from having the symptoms because a lot of times the workplace bullying can cause psychological yes. and mental health issues and so a lot of times people don't even recognize that they can't sleep at night or they're having urinary you know frequency or you know they're having an upset stomach and it's just continuous and it just comes out of nowhere and you have no other signs or symptoms for what what's causing that so it's important to recognize that it can lead to bad behavior. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up is that as far as California goes, you know, because we live in California, we don't have legislation on workplace bullying. Mm -hmm. However, if you are in a protected class, meaning, you know, if you are because of being discriminated because of your race, your gender, your sexual um, orientation, and you are also being bullied, then there are laws that will protect you based on those uh, discrimination laws because bullying will be you know, lumped into the actual discrimination. So it is against the law based on a protected class, but there is no legislation currently in California against workplace bullying, even though there's been legislation put on the floor. Okay, that's what I was gonna ask. Is there something in the works with that? Because there definitely needs to be a law against that. Definitely, so. and I know um, for sure Canada does have a law against it and there are one or two other key states that do um, you would have to google those to find out and I think Oregon is one of the states that does have uh, something against workplace bullying. Okay I kind of want to jump back over to those um, psychological effects that one can physical effects one can experience from workplace bullying. and I just have to say adults that are going around bullying that's just ridiculous that's more so of a high, a high school middle school even elementary but when you have adults going around laughing and poking and that's just ridiculous so shame on you if you're doing that but I want I know that Miss Martin, you personally went through this. So yes. you're not just talking, you actually went through this, experienced it. Exactly. What was your experience? What, what happened with you in the workplace and how did you deal with it and what was the outcome? Okay, well, um, actually I did have a similar, um, actually I would call it one-on-one -on -one bullying and um, mobbing. Um, but what happened with me over a series of about three or four years, there were incidences that were occurring that had caused me to start having uh, some psychological and physical issues. However, I didn't realize that that's what was taking place until after I, I had seen um, a professional. Um, many of the things that were happening, there was sabotage of my work. Um, there were, you know, put down at meetings, uh, people, you know, insulting or snickering, you know, making comments you know, just targeting me for different things and I could never understand why that was taking place. But because I was a job steward during that time, I knew to document the incidences of what was going on. So I started documenting all the incidences and then I started doing research, trying to find out what was going on. And um, what came about is that I discovered that there was an institute on workplace bullying and I started reading the signs and the symptoms and the things that happened on your job that people can do to you. And so once that took place, I um, immediately started being proactive by filing complaints. Mm -hmm. I went to the manager, I went to human resources, and I also went to, as far as filing a workers' comp claim against this behavior because it was actually affecting my work. The outcome is that I have a new manager. I still work for uh, the same department, but there have been some um, behavior modification um, training in the department so that people can recognize that that is not an acceptable behavior. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing for me, I think, is that if I hadn't taken a stand, you know, the next employee would have probably had to go through something even more significant than what I had to go through. And I just felt like the lot fell on me. And thank God for, you know, my church family and for my good friends who were, you know, praying for me and you know, helping me through the entire process, including my sister. Excuse me. No. Um, 
but it was um it was an experience and it took about four years to get out from up under it but i just thank god every day that now i can be a spokesperson Absolutely. and i am passionate about the t um the subject and if anyone comes to me and they're experiencing those things i am more than able to assist them and try to point them in the right direction. But it can be very overwhelming. Yes, obviously. It's no laughing matter. It's ridiculous. I'll repeat, it's ridiculous. Any any person, we're all adults here, no one should have to experience bullying in the workplace. We're not 12 and 13. We're grown adults and that shouldn't be taking place. Exactly. Uh, anyone that has to go through that, you're going to be given some information in just a few moments where you can reach out and get help. Do not tolerate this. Do not. There is help out there. I want you, uh, Ms. Martin, to give out some information on where um, we can stay connected with you. There might be some questions to come in where you can maybe redirect someone to where they need to go. Sure. Um, yeah, just give out some information where we okay. receive it. Um, actually, if you have questions, other questions concerning workplace bullying, and you need some resources, if you would just email me at um, M, as in Mary, S as in Sam, H U G H E S. 29 at gmail.com. I'll be able to send information back to you or send you links and send you other resources. Also, there's a community resources in most of your areas where you can reach out and receive um, free counseling because some people are actually to the point where you know they may even consider suicide because they can't get out from up under what's going on on their jobs because people need their jobs. So again, you can reach me by contacting me at my Gmail account, M as in Mary, S as in Sam, H-U-G-H-E-S 29 at gmail.com. Thank you so much. You're and welcome. although this was a very, very serious, emotional topic, yes. it was. It, we needed to talk about this. Like I said, so many people are experiencing this and they don't know where to go, who to reach out to. Or maybe they do, but they're just afraid. And, and it's never acceptable. So you've been given some resources where you can get some more information and help. Ms. Martin, I thank you for being on The Dollhouse. And uh, you're always welcome to come back. Thank you, yeah. Tina. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next week.